Hey, oh, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. It's Omni Dog. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about collected editions from Image and Dark Horse that have great extra material in them. Collected editions, the big hard covers and some hard soft covers that have great extra material in them from Image and Dark Horse. So, one caveat, I don't have everything from Image and Dark Horse. So if I leave something out that you think is important, feel free to leave it in a comment uh, as, as uh, something that you think has great material. Uh, I tried to own everything at one time and my wife put me in intervention and now I don't own, don't try and own everything at once. So um, yeah, that happened. So, okay. Let's leave that in the past, move on to the future, which is right now. Let's start with I Hate Fairyland from Image. Scotty Young's great book. Who doesn't love Scotty Young's great art and his great writing? We'll start with, I love variant covers. I don't collect floppies anymore, so I don't get to see variant covers. So I love them. I love seeing great, oh, that's pretty gory. I love seeing great variant covers and Scotty Young, of course, does some of the great covers. Issue 6 script, which he does, and it includes some black and white art from the page that it's about. Page 2. So that's great. You get a script with some artwork, and that's pretty much what this extra material is, is variant covers and a full script from page two. I, I, I don't know. Is it a full script? Page 16, page 17. I don't know. It's a lot of it. So there's that. I Hate Fairyland. Great book. And here's a book that all the ever great it great guy ed brubaker actually I have no idea if he's a great guy a great writer ed brubaker all his books contain lots of extra material he's great about that he's one of those guys there's so many extras he has a table of contents for him so he starts out and gives you all the covers for the books and these are some great covers And then he goes on to what he calls a teaser, which is, or sorry, trailer, which is how they sell the book, I believe. Then he has essays and illustrations. He's in all his books uh, that I've read. He always has people writing essays about the time period, which is really cool. Then there are essays, I'm sorry, illustrations. These are of famous Hollywood stars um, of people you guys probably don't even know at this point. Here's Errol Flynn. You poor little kids, you probably don't even know who Errol Flynn is. But I'm old, so I do know. You know who this is. That's a great illustration. Um, and then here's the whole thing on the research they did. And then here's the color process, which is so important to this book. Color sometimes gets short shrift, but they pay attention to it. And a lot of times we forget how important color is to a book. The Fade Out. Such a great book. I gave it to my sister for Christmas a few years ago. Next up, Josh Williamson's Nailbiter. I'm waiting for the third murder edition to come out to read the whole thing, and then I'll give it a review. But I remember reading the first 10 issues or so in floppies, and I remember I loved it. So I'm going to, he's, I'm going to remember, I'm going to love reading it. He's another guy that does table of contents for the whole book, for the material. Starts out with covers. That's particularly gory. And I'm sure, as you know, if you've read it, that it's a particularly gory book. It is called the Murder Edition, after all. Um, 
so you, you've got covers in here nail biter script number one it's always a cool process to see comic book scripts I think the original pitch actually I'm really jonesing to read this I hope that uh, here's the process so here's initial sketches I hope the third volume comes out pretty soon because I really want to read this then here's as they go along and color it in, draw it in. So that's really cool to see. And character sketches. A lot of good material here. Nail biter. Here's a book that I was going to show all three um, books of because I think the extras in this book are so cool. Uh, these have, t in my mind, some of the coolest variant covers out there. When I was collecting floppies, I would get every single Wicked and Divine floppy possible because they're so cool um, in my mind. That's my opinion. Some people don't like Wicked and Divine. That's cool. I get it. I like it. Um, and I understand it, which is a big deal because some of his books I don't get. Um, where are we here? Wicked and Divine... Uh, where are the beginning? Where are we here? Here we go. Uh, alternate covers. Don't want to lose that book plate. Alternate covers. And... Making of so this be, this is a continuation of making of this must be really cool to do when you're a successful comic book writer and you an artist and you put together a book and you want to sell it and you put it all together and you feel good about wanting to sell it. And you get it sold. Must be a great feeling. So there's that. Then there's writer's notes. Mm -hmm. Writer's notes. Which may help with understanding of the book. Because some of it is pretty high concept. All these writer's notes. And there's a huge chunk of writer's notes here. That's the rest of the book. Writer's notes. Yeah, Wicked and Divine. Really cool. Whoops, get that book plate in there. And now, this is where my wing's going to get rocked. Because of Rick Remender and Low. He loves to put in lots of extras. So let me get to the extras. He starts with alternate covers, or variants rather. And this is a big, these are big books. Remender likes to put, put out big books for image. Then we've got, what is this? Cover pencils, that's cool. More cover pencils. Uh, artist sketchbook. That's cool that it's in color. And then some pages, kind of raw pages. That's really cool. And I wonder if there's any scripts in here. Here's a big splash page that you can't really see that well. Whoop. And some script work. So that's cool. And another Remender book. 
I just got done reading this a couple months ago. Deadly Class. This thing comes with a soundtrack to it. I forget where it is, but I know on Spotify there's a soundtrack to it, which is really cool. And I know the TV show, maybe I'm thinking of the TV show that has a soundtrack that comes with it. But I think he published a soundtrack that he either listened to while writing it or he suggests you listen to while reading it. Either way, the music associated with this book rocks. So here are the extras. We're starting out with Cover Gallery, which I really appreciate. As you know, I don't collect floppies, so I love seeing the covers. And we've got some character head sketches and body sketches. And we've got some other sketch work, laying it out. Looks like they messed with some lettering here. That's cool. Some layouts. Some black and white layouts. Lots of black and white layouts. There's tons of them. And script work. Mm, those books are heavy, man. <sighs> okay, I'm going to take a break and go to a smaller book. Because I got two big mamas waiting for me right there. Let's go to Saga. A little smaller book. Whew. One of the most famous books in comics right now is Saga. Even though it's on hiatus, whatever, it still manages to capture plenty of attention. And it starts out with talking about the book, how it's going to be laid out. Plot, script, then you've got script work, more script work, some thumbnails, colors and letters. Fiona's Staples Sketchbook. And some cool drawings. Now, I believe that the reason there aren't covers there is I think they put the covers, yeah, they put the covers in front of every chapter. So that's Saga. Let me go with another Brubaker book because I need to let my muscles rest for these the next two I'm going to do. Fatal. First, is this the first edition? Yeah, there's two of Fatal. Um, a science fiction and fantasy book of Brubaker's, which I loved because it was so different. Here's his table of contents with the cover gallery. God, I love this book. I really did. It's just so different. Essays by Jess Nivens. 
These essays are worth it too. Take the time to read these. Essays and drawings. Essays. More drawings. The process. This is craftsmanship, man. He and Sean Phillips. I, this, this is what comic books can be. Just real art form to me. Here's some of their lettering decisions. And some sketchy stuff. Fatal. Awesome. All right, come here, you big boy. <clears throat> Another Remender Big Monster, Black Science. Another great book. That's the thing. I'm winnowing down my collection to nothing but books that I love and want to reread. Cover Gallery. Variant Cover Gallery. So that's cool. I read this so long ago, I can't even remember it. I read it when it was out in floppies. So I need to reread this for sure. It and book two. It's character sketches. Some breakdowns in the process and things. And script work. And another Remender book from Image. With everybody's favorite artist, Sean Gordon Murphy. Tokyo Ghost. It starts out with cover variants by the fabulous S.G. Murphy and as an aside uh, Punk Rock Jesus by Sean Murphy that has his hardcover I'm not sure if that's out of print or not let me see real quick if it's out of print the hardcover I, for some reason I have a feeling it is but uh, okay Punk, rock, rock, Jesus in books, paperback, deluxe edition. Oh, okay. It's uh, it's not, it's out of print, but it's not expensive. Get it. That's by DC. Uh, maybe a Vertigo title. What did it say? Punk Rock, Jesus, Verdi um, I don't know, whatever. That book is like half full of extras. It's unbelievable. That's got the most extras I've ever seen. That's a, uh, Punk Rock, Jesus by Sean Murphy. That's got the most extra material of any book I've ever seen. So get that. It's a great book. It's remarkable. It's controversial. It's amazing. Um, so let's get back to the matter at hand before that. Addendum. Here's some more variants. Tokyo Ghost Sketch. Ooh, that's pretty. Tokyo Ghost Sketchbook. Sean Gordon Murphy Sketchbook. Some lettering stuff. Ah, this is nice. 
Now, I like this book. Here's some um, scripting. I'm not, I'm not sure this book got 100% love. Uh, I 100% loved it. So you may want to uh, check it out on Comixology maybe if you haven't read it yet, if you don't have an opinion on it yet. I, I loved it. So there you go. Here's a book that is one of the best books ever written. Um, and I'm kind of cheating because the extra material, extra material in it has to be read. It's not optional. The extra mater material in these two books, I, I got both of them in the two uh, collections, has to be read because it makes for a much richer experience and it shows how much... Greg Rucka and his artist, let me do the artist justice and tell you his, his and or her first name, Art and Letters by Michael Lark with Brian Level and Production Assistance and Letters by Jody Wynn, Colors by Sandy Argus. I'm talking about, of course, Lazarus, one of the best books ever written in my top uh, 12 now. It used to be 10, but it's top 12 now. The amount of research and world building they did in this book is second to none and i'm preaching to the choir you probably already have this book the extra material in this book tells you the level of detail they went to in creating the world that was built um and it's got it it's got a gallery uh, this is the first book. It's got a cool gallery. It talks about the cover process. But then it goes into on world building and it shows you the world map. Who controls the world. And then it goes into the family profiles. Which you have to read because you, it gives you a better understanding of the world and who runs it. So you have to read these. It's not optional. Um, and, and that's pretty much the, it for the first book. Additional world building. Oh, they go into uh, mock ads that they made. But the second book is where they really get into the world building because they went so far as to make up things that you see on the wall and signs and things like that. They researched and made up in real life things that you see on the wall, ads, commercials, things like that, uh, items. They mocked them up and made them uh, uh like in a computer and things like that. And you'll see what I mean. Here we go. So here's the world map. This is Lazarus book two. And here is the fight choreography, how they in real life built the fights so he could draw them. Then they computer modeled the fights so he could draw them. And then he starts the cover process. And then they talk about the rest of the time, the world building. Um, <laughs> they go into detail about the the tv shows they create in the world building this is in a comic book this is the tv shows they go into this is these are the signs that are put up these are the ads that are made you have to read this these are the products that are available in different languages. 
You have to read these to get a better feeling and a richer experience for Lazarus. It is a remarkable book. And I'm sure you guys already have it. If you don't, you need to run out and get it. So Lazarus Extra Material isn't extra. It's not optional. You have to get it. You have to read it. You have to get it. You have to read it. Okay. Building my arm up for the next big load that's going to come from Black Horse. Fortunately, I picked some small book books first. <clears throat> Even the paperbacks from Dark Horse have extra matter. Uh, Lobster Johnson, this is book five. Um, even the paperbacks have a lot of extra stuff. This one comes with a sketchbook. Which is pretty good for a trade paperback. Lobster Johnson's a great read, by the way. So that's it for the trade paperback, but paperback, but that's pretty good for a trade. This next book I included because there's going to be an omnibus of it. And since this is a Mignola book, it's going to have a ton of extra matter in it. And that's Witchfinder, which is also a great book. Um, I can guarantee that it's going to have a ton of extra material in it. This is a sketchbook that's in Witchfinder, but whatever the omnibus, the omnibus is whatever issues it contains. Um, Witchfinder is such a great book. And I don't know yet if I'm going to upgrade from my trades. It's possible. Um, I might. Because it's fun to think of an omnibus of Witchfinder. Because this is such a great book. But these are the extras in a trade. Which is pretty good. So Dark Horse does a good job with all Hellboy related stuff. Any Hellboy paperback is going to have extra stuff. Usually nothing as elaborate as script work, but a lot of sketchbook stuff. Which leads me to the first hardcover. That's our buddy Abe Sapien. He has three books out. Let's take a look at the extra material. There is a boatload of it in all three books. Sketches. More sketches. What is this? These look like covers to me. Then we have some sketchbook turned into real drawings. Sketches and final drawings. Alternate sketch and a final cover. Here's some more sketch work. Oh, this looks beautiful.
witchcraft and demonology. The Ogopogo. Model and sheets and designs for characters. And some more artwork. And this looks like a little, what is this? This looks like a little story. I actually haven't read this yet, so this looks like a little story. I read Abe Sapien back in floppies, so I don't remember it. But that is a lot of stuff. BPRD Plague of Frogs. I'm assuming it's the same in the trades as it is in the hardcovers. This is volume one. Hollow Earth Sketchbook. More sketchy sketches for BPRD. Lots of good sketch work. Plague of Frogs sketchbook. <laughs> Some frightening stuff. So there's lots in these Dark Horse books. Uh, while I'm on Dark Horse Hellboy, let me pull up Hellboy himself, Library Edition Volume 1. <clears throat> These are beautiful. I'm not going to show you all six, but I'll show you one. Um, and there's some good back matter in this. Afterward, starting with the afterward, there's a little story. It's a lot of story. This might have been a teaser. I read it a year ago, so of course my memory is not what it was, or it has ever been. Hellboy sketchbook. Some iterations of Hellboy. Nice color on that one guy. And on it goes. More sketches. Lots more sketches. That's one thing Mignola does is pile on the sketchbook work, which is really cool. Okay. Last big book. This is a hefty mama, but it's got lots of great material. It is a great book. Crazy great book. Mm, 
Black Hammer by Jeff Lemire, Dean Ormston. And if you haven't read this book yet, you need to run out and get it too. Let's see if I can get to the extras. Real quick. Yeah. It starts with the afterword for Black Hammer. And then bios on the characters. <laughs> Which are great. Black Hammer Sketchbook. Oop. Okay, whatever. Lots of cool drawings in this. Lots of cool drawings. And then some following pages contain high-res scans of Dean's original interior art for some of the early issues of Black Hammer, with the lettering overlays added. This is cool looking. Lots of pages of these. <laughs> Here's a Dark Knight ode. Homage, rather. Barbalian. A little JLI. So, this big hefty book is such a great book. Black Hammer. That brings us to the last Dark Horse book. And Matt Kent generally does not, as far as I can tell, my management didn't really have any extras. It, it was last page right up until the back cover. Um, but Department H does have, uh, the uh, books in that series does have some back material that is worthwhile. It has a sketchbook. Oh, this book's so light compared to that last book. So yeah, this is Matt Kent's sketchbook. Early sketches. Color test. Original issue one cover. And there you go. So I hope that helps you make any decision that you have out there. If you happen to like uh, extra material, extra bonus material uh, with any of your books, I hope that helps you in your decision to purchase these books. And uh, that's it. So if you uh, like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Uh, I answer comments all the time. So feel free to leave a comment.
and feel free to uh, leave the books from Image and Dark Horse uh, that you think I left out accidentally or on purpose or just didn't know about. So peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for watching.